Imagine critiquing other religions from other countries, such as Hinduism or Islam, and then coming out with a stunning line about religions belonging to people with brown skins. I think you can guess which channel came out with this one. Um, it may surprise no one to know that probably Jesus had probably quite dark skin growing up as he did in that area of the world. Um, certainly if you looked at anything like Mizrazi Jews today, who look fairly dark skinned, if you ever encounter them, he certainly had a fairly dark skin. But leaving that aside, there seems to be something singularly joyless in the idea that religions should not have any sense of humour, of fun in them, or playfulness. Oh, dearie me. Um, all of the major religions I can think of have periods of laughter and seriousness and Remember and things like where you remember the dead and mourn them, or think about that seriously and think about your own mortality. And they also have periods where there's a sense of humor because that's humanity and that's life. And as an example of that, and I'll do a bit of preaching and bore you silly with a reading from the Bible Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8, to eat everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Sadly, we seem right now to be in a time of war. <sighs> My earnest hope is that will end somewhat, or at least some resolution to some of those issues will come to us. How so? Is beyond my whip. I don't claim to be have the wisdom to resolve these issues. If I did, I I would do so right now. But in any case, let's have a look at some traditions in some religions. Firstly, since we're talking about Holly and Hinduism, and that came up in many, not just Simon Webb, but many other channels were going on about the horrors of it. Let's have a basic definition of it. This is a very basic definition of it. And anyone who's Hindu is feels free to chuck in some more or enlarge on this definition. I'm not a Hindu. Or that, although I know this much about it and a bit more as well, it's not something I'm an expert on. If it was Judaism or Catholicism I, or, or Orthodox Christianity, I know far more about these phrases. Holly, often called the Festival of Colours, is a vibrant and joyful Hindu celebration that marks spring's arrival, the triumph of good over evil, and then literally love between Radha and Krishna. Now, obviously, I know who Radha and Krishna are. I can go this far with it, but Holly, dating back to the 4th century, stands along Diwali. The Festival of Lights is one of the most prominent Hindu celebrations and is famous for the playful tossing of colour. Powder's waters. Tossing powder and water about? All very silly, you might say. Stuff you wouldn't do in religion. That's not stuff we would do in a religion, is it? But let's have a look at sort of some other traditions where you have sort of what might be considered silly. Here's Purim from Judaism. We'll probably get a stupid ad first, this being YouTube. No, I don't want to clear out my wardrobe, but uh, it's quite happy as it is, thanks. Uh, in any case, here's pure people dressed as teddies, figures from Jewish history, mucking about, all sorts of silliness, robes, characters from legend. I know that bloke on top of the car, by the way. He, he's a definite clown in real life as well. Um Anyone who worked in Stamford Hill, regardless of their religion, would know that, would have seen this. It's just a good laugh, people mucking about, being silly, pranking about a bit, spraying coloured string about, and that 
nobody takes it deadly serious because, as I said, religion is about balance as well. And then, from my own tradition, carnival. People always think of Notting Hill Carnival and people drinking some lager down or listening to some bassy music or uh, or a DJ and that, but carnival is actually quite rooted in Catholicism and was basically rooted in the uh, the period just before sort of uh, Lent began. That was its original sort of root. The word carnival itself, as this article notes, derives from carnalivarium, which means a removal of meat, because in the past, the Lenten fast for Catholics was a lot harsher than it was now. Eggs, cream and butter were gone. You weren't eating them for Lent. Forget it. <laughs> As it stands now, the the only really serious Catholics who keep that would be, well, you'd get some SSXP Catholics, um, you'd get some Eastern Catholics who still do it, and over in the Eastern Orthodox Church, where it's not Easter yet, they were doing it. But most Catholics in, in Western Europe would give up some sweeties or chocolate or sugar in their tea or something like that. But here we are in Louisiana in, in France, and, and not surprisingly, Louisiana has one of the own, oldest carnivals in America. Hardly surprising, considering Louisiana's um, history as of being settled by the French. And France has a variable rep- relationship with the church. It's sometimes regarded as the oldest daughter of the Catholic Church. And because of its, um, shall we say, the issues after the French Revolution, sometimes as a rebellious daughter. But in any case, you can see it's, it's rooted in... In Catholic history, I think this is Venice. I have been in Venice once for Carnival, and I think that is Venice. It could be elsewhere. It would be helpful if they broadened it out a bit. Oh, no, it is Carnival Celebrations in, in Venice at Italy. Someone's actually stuck it down. I've been there for the mask-wearing bit. I've even got a mask sort of wandering around here next to me somewhere, which was worn on the day. Um So as you can see, it's rooted in both. There seems to be some curiously strange and joyless stuff in that. Obviously, if you're going to do holly in a country that's not Hindu, it's probably best to pop it in an area where everybody knows they're entering that and and they're not going to get paint thrown randomly or dust at people who aren't. They're not going to be amused if it goes all over their clothes, but that's one of the few practical concerns I could see about it. A few other issues about Easter, looking at some videos today from numerous sources, the name Easter, and I've used Orthodox Wiki here, which is an author, a wiki for the Eastern Orthodox Church. It's also quite funny when it discusses my own church, this one, because it gets quite polemical. You haven't seen anything polemical until we've seen Catholics and Eastern Orthodox bashing each other. It's quite, quite hilarious. Um, but Easter is actually an outlier as a name and is used more, more often in English and a few other languages. Pasha is the name that's used most often. You can see that when you look in Irish where it's Kaska. This spends quite some time talking about Easter traditions, a bit of time talking about how Easter doesn't fall on the same date for sort of Catholics and the Orthodox, except when it does, just to be annoying. It does every so often, and it then tells you about sort of the traditions of entering the church and the divine liturgy, which is the Eastern Orthodox version of the Mass, and which can go on for a lot longer, <laughs> a lot longer if you ever go to one. Don't don't dream on sitting either, because you won't be, unless you're real or elderly, you won't be sitting on a chair right here. Um, but I find the an entirely joyless approach to sort of religion where people are going on about the horrors of Holly and people throwing a bit of dust and paint around. And I was particularly, well, I'll be quite honest, I'm I'm quite disgusted by the notion of people talking about foreign religions of brown-skinned people. It was like, really? The day before Easter? You're going on like that? That's an insult, really, to the to the core principles of Judaism, Christianity, and Hinduism. All of which stress respect for the character of a person, not this. 
that's what they put stress on. A man's inner character or a woman's inner character. Not the colour of their skin, not their wealth, but their inner moral character. 